Well, tonight we have a very special treat for you. We have our premier speaker, uh, Pastor Jerry Melgoza is going to be preaching tonight. And so you're in for a treat. And then tomorrow for all the guys, we have a treat for you. We're going to have our men's discipleship tomorrow at 10 a.m. And that's going to be at Sentinella Park. And so come on out, bring somebody. We're going to have a great time with food, fellowship, the word and a special guest speaker who's going to be coming uh, to minister God's word uh, with us tomorrow. Well, I'm going to pray for our giving and for the needs. We have several needs. I just wanted to mention uh, to you, we're going to pray for Diana. Uh, for wisdom that God would come alongside of her and give her the guidance and wisdom that she needs for Marlene, for God's presence in her life, 
Uh, we want to pray with Tricia for peace. God would provide that for her, her son, or I'm sorry, her, her brother Joseph. Uh, also her cousin Monica. We want to pray for comfort for Monica. We want to pray with Lizette for the Delira family. We want to lift them up to the Lord that God would meet their needs. And also for Eileen's family, uh, Maria's cousin, and also Sebastian, her son. I hear a lot of good things about him. We want to pray for him for wisdom and also for Francis's niece, Mika. We want to continue to pray for Mika and all the first responders and those who have been inundated because of this pandemic. We want to lift them up. So if you're ready to pray with me um, uh, for, our, you know, the needs in our church, uh, why don't you join me with your heads bowed, eyes closed. Father God, we come before you tonight. First of all, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for providing for our needs. We thank you, Father God, for reminding us, my God, that you are present, Father God. Regardless of what we experience in this world, you are present with your people. And we want to pray tonight, Father God, for Diana, that you would support, my God, my God, the, the longings in her heart, that you would come alongside her, speak to her, comfort her, watch over her, give her the wisdom that she needs to make decisions, Father. We pray for Marlene, her family, her unborn baby, that you would be with her, strengthen her, Father God. We lift up Trisha, Lord God, to you. We ask that you would provide peace for her. My God, we pray for her brother, Joseph, my God, for comfort in his life. Her cousin, Monica, for comfort, Father, that your presence would be there, that they would sense your presence, see your face, my God. We come alongside Lizette, my God, to pray for the Delira family, and we pray your presence upon that family, your guidance, your touch, my God, wisdom, my God, from on high, that you would move in their situation. We want to pray, Father God, for Eileen's family, Father God, for Mar Maria's cousin. We lift her up her cousin to you, Lord God, for your presence there, for Sebastian, her son, for wisdom, Father God, for, for Francis's niece, Mika. We lift her up to you. Continue to move in her life. We want to pray for the first responders, Lord God. We want to pray that you would watch over those that are inundated, my God, with all of the concerns and the cares because of this pandemic. We pray for the church. We pray for their uh, ability, my God, to be a witness for you. We pray for the giving, Father God, that you would bless the finances of the church, my God. Give us strength to be, my God, a, a provider for our community, to continue to preach the gospel day after day, my God, to the community here in Inglewood. And I pray your blessing on tomorrow's event. I pray your protection upon our people. Be with us. Strengthen us. Watch over us. We ask this all in Jesus' name. And God's people say amen and amen. God bless you and enjoy the service. And we'll see you tomorrow, guys. God bless. Hello to all of you that are tuning in tonight to our Friday night virtual service. Once again, to the Victory Outreach family. Hello to all of you, the extended family and the body of Christ. We welcome all of you here uh, uh, that are tuning in tonight, I pray that you, including uh, your families, are, that you guys are healthy, you're being safe, and keeping a great focus on God during these different times that we are living in today. I'm going to be uh, sharing tonight for the next several minutes. I'm excited. Uh, I'm encouraged. I come full of anticipation, knowing that God is going to speak and inspire and uh, in a great way tonight as we look at his word together. Um, I want to thank God for this great chance or opportunity to be able to share tonight. Uh, I never take his word lightly, uh, whether it's from behind a pulpit or elsewhere. It's always a privilege and it's nothing short of that. I also want to thank Pastor Kevin for uh, allowing me to preach uh, and giving me some space in his space. Amen. Uh, but then we know also it's a sacred area, and uh, so it's not to be taken lightly. And uh, so I'm going to be sharing. Uh, once again, we welcome you. And I'm going to be, uh, if you have your Bibles there, turn them to the book of Psalms, chapter 145. Psalms, chapter 145. I'm going to read one scripture found in verse 3. And I'm reading from the New International Version, and it reads like this. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. 
right where you're at. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much tonight for God. What's uh, taking place throughout today for your keeping power that sustains our life. We thank you for your grace upon these lives of ours. Lord, I pray right now for those that are tuning in that you would fulfill your purpose as to why uh, you have this divine appointment for them. From the youngest to the oldest, you speak, you inspire, God, you encourage from heaven tonight, right? Where they're at, whether they're in an office, uh, a bedroom, a living room, we pray for the power of your might to prevail. When all is said and done, be the lifter of our head, I pray. In Jesus' name we all say, amen, amen. God bless you. Now, when I think about it, I think it is cool and very fitting and very appropriate when greatness is not only achieved, but when greatness is recognized or acknowledged. Greatness achieved in so many different aspects of life, then on the other hand, it's acknowledged. We see greatness recognized or acknowledged in the movie industry. We see greatness uh, recognize or acknowledge in space endeavors. We see it recognized in science labs. Also, we see it recognized in family life. I'm talking about greatness here tonight. We also see greatness recognized in the medical field. Also within the educational field. And then we see it recognized in one of my favorites, it's not on the top of this list, I just mentioned a moment ago, and that is the sports world. Great feats accomplished by individuals. Hard work put in by mere people just like you and I. Hours of commitment, not giving up, determined people, discipline, practice-oriented individuals that are diligent enough to achieve, to accomplish, to succeed and to eventually win. So yes, I believe it's very appropriate and very fitting to take some time, even if it's just for a moment, to recognize greatness in my opinion. Now, here at Victory Outreach Inglewood, I've recognized, I've been privileged to be able to recognize greatness for uh, several brothers and sisters that have uh, uh, been an example of greatness for 10 years, 15 years, 20 plus years. And when I think about all those years, I can't help to, uh, but to think about brothers like Brother Ben, faithful for over 20 years. How I know that? Because I've been here 20 plus years. Brother Caesar, faithful for 20 plus years. Brother Jacob, 20 plus years, probably 30 plus years. He was here a lot longer than before I got here. And then you can't leave out Brother Gary and Brother Gilly. We're talking 10, 15 plus years for those individuals. Brother Gary, those brothers, Brother Gary and Gilly. Then Tommy, who we know moved to uh, Colorado, was here for years of, of faithfulness, faithful service and faithful labor, labor these brothers that I'm mentioning. Brother Wilford, who just went on to be with the Lord prior to him getting ill, getting of, of, a, of a certain age. Uh, prior to that, he was here for, for years, 15 plus years. And then Pastor Kevin in the area of labor and service unto the kingdom. A good handful of brothers for, that, in my opinion, have achieved greatness while here at Victor Average Ingle. When you think about the sisters, Sister Maciel. Years, we're talking a lot of years, 10, 15 plus years. Sister Melody Bias, service in the, in the nursery for all the way back to our Cerise days. You know, uh, Sister Frances, years of ministry and labor. And Sister Linda Garcia, Eileen, we're talking about years of faithful service and, and labor. Linda, Eileen, Sister Margaret. And we definitely can't leave out Sister Debbie. Labor of just years of service and, um, uh, and, and labor. I'm talking about greatness achieved and greatness recognized. But what about Jesus Christ of Nazareth? The head of the body of Christ. 
The God of Israel who summons you and me by name. The God who miraculously formed us in our mother's womb. The God who really did deliver us from the hand of the foe. Despite whatever background we came from, we know we've been delivered by the power of God with regards to the life we once walked. Wherever we were at, God delivered us, didn't he? In Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 6, the Bible says, There is no one like you, O Lord. You are great, and great is your name in might. Praise God for all those brothers and sisters I, I, I mentioned a moment ago who achieved, who has achieved greatness. But if there's one entity that I believe that needs to be acknowledged every single day for his great feats, for not giving up, for a winning attitude, for hard work put in, and commitment, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Not periodically, not just for a moment, not real brief, but I'm talking about every single day we're above ground, my brothers and my sisters. In Isaiah chapter 12, verse 6, the Bible says, Cry aloud and shout for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. That's powerful. Recognize greatness when you see it. Celebrate greatness in our midst. Honor greatness daily because he is in our midst. As a matter of fact, his mercies are new every morning. His word endures forever. His love is everlasting. His grace abounds. His forgiveness is so good. The Bible says that when he gets rid of it, he remembers it no more. His righteousness endures forever. In 1 Chron Chronicles chapter 16, verse 25, the Bible says, For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Or are you just kind of just living life? Overlooking, not taking into account, perhaps taking things for granted. Because trust me, it's easy to get up. It's easy to get up and look at ourselves in the mirror and not realize you are the creation of the living God that he, that he strategically formed you in your mother's womb. It's easy to step outside and say, man, it's hot out here, but not look at the sun and say, you know what? My God put that sun there. He created that sun and strategi strategically placed it and ordained it to be where it's at on a given day. Uh, it's easy to drive down the road and see trees and flowers and really just kind of just take it for granted and not realize the king of kings, the God of creation, put that thing there. He created the trees in Genesis chapter 1. It's easy to kind of just get up and kind of just live a life uh, without recognizing it. Luke chapter 1 verse 49, Mary says, for the mighty one has done great things for me. And holy is his name. Greatness achieved, great, greatness recognized. In a world that is, uh, is engulfed in so much wrong, in a world that is, you know, uh, uh, that, that is in a such disarray today or, or to yesterday, in a world that we live in today that is so chaotic, it is, I think, that we need to take notice of God's greatness in more detail, more precise, with deeper contemplation. He is a mighty God. He is a mighty God. He is a great God. When you think about his greatness, his creation process, his redemptive work, his miracle working power in the Old Testament, all throughout the New Testament, you can't help but to acknowledge and recognize a, a, a great God. Psalms chapter 145, verse 3, we just read it a moment ago. Great is the Lord and, and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Now that word fathom, it means can't understand after much thought. But how many of you know, despite the fact that we can't completely wrap our minds around God's greatness, Sometimes we can't understand it, just like we can't understand why he forgives us from so much. Things that we've done in the past, he's erased it. We can't fully understand that, but we know it's there. Just like we sometimes we can't understand how, you know, he spared us from so much. 
things that could have tragically happened, but he spared us. We don't fully understand that, but it took place. We still can identify his greatness. We still can recognize it. Because nevertheless, it's there, his greatness. Like I said a moment ago, when you think about his creation process, his redemptive work, his miracle working power, promises fulfilled, prophecies fulfilled, not to mention his virgin birth. And then how he walked for three and a half years and exemplified a life that was faultless, that was sinless, even to the point where he spoke about a death that he would eventually incur, death even on a cross, and suffered one of the, violent, the most violent ways of dying back in those days, and that was a crucified death. But nevertheless, and then also he was raised from the dead on the third day, just like he said he was. I'm talking about a mighty God. I'm talking about a faithful God, a consistent God. Who's most worthy of praise here this evening. Greatness at his best. There's an argument right now or debate. Now, who's going to be the, 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 the goat between uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James. Now that word GOAT, it's an acronym for greatest of all time. And, you know, you're going to have people giving their different opinions. But I think the Church of Jesus Christ needs to acknowledge the greatest of all time in terms of greatness. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the kind of God I want to praise in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. In more detail, taking notice in a more precise manner. I want to be able to drive down the street and see something that he created and take notice of it. I want to be able to wake up and say, thank you, Jesus, that I got breath today. Oh, I know I am fearfully and wonderfully made, oh God. I want to be able to get up and just kind of slow down and take a ride down the coast one day and not just take the ocean for granted, but understand that my God is the one that created that thing and put so much water in it and commanded it to only go so far. And not only that, the inhabitants that live in it, God also created that as well. I want to be able to do that. Amen. I want to be able to look at the moon in the night and the stars that faithfully set in place and realize, you know what? It's my God who created all this. The greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ, of God Almighty. Amen? That's awesome. A greatness that's very fitting, very appropriate to be recognized daily because it's achieved daily. His grace is upon your life daily. His mercies are new every morning daily. He gives chances daily. He gives forgiveness daily. Salvation and saving knowledge. It is achieved daily from a great God. Psalms 147 verse 5 says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Wow. Wow. We are so privileged to be able to recognize his greatness. To be able to experience his saving knowledge. To be heirs of such tremendous amount of greatness. In a world that is moving on without taking notice. In a world that's kind of just living this fast, in this fast lane. On this wide road that leads to destruction. In this world that is kind of just, you know, just uh, doing its own thing. Without identifying these distinct marks from a great God. Relying upon one's own understanding or one's own conclusion. Call it evolution. Or one's own flesh. But in a world that is just leaning on its own. We, the church of Jesus Christ, are so privileged. And so graciously positioned in the right place at the right time. To gain and to maintain fresh perspective about his greatness. Greatness achieved by our great God. What a privilege that is. The Bible says, do not be. And then I wonder why Proverbs, uh, there's a scripture that says, do not be hasty and miss the way. Psalm 72, verse 18. Matter of fact, I'm going to read. Oh, let, yeah, let's go ahead and read it now. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone works wonders. 
I was, I took my daughter on, on a hike uh, not too long ago, and as we were there hiking, we came across some ravines and some certain, you know, the trees and the bushes and the mountains and the waterfall and everything I identified, it was in the Bible. I said, man, God is awesome. God is awesome because he created all this. I didn't just go get exercise and try to just take my daughter on an outing. We, I took the time to identify. I took the time to contemplate. I took the time to pass the information on to my daughter as well about his greatness, his creation, his great, wonderful working power. Fresh perspective, graciously positioned, being able to notice in detail and to recognize. Awesome. I think that's a greatness we need to identify and recognize, the greatness that he's achieved for you and I. There's a few things I'm going to leave in, uh, tonight with you. A few things here that I think will help us just kind of just uh, really uh, be able to recognize what he's achieved, not for himself, but for the world, for you and I. Amen. For you and I, for his children. The first thing is, I think, according to the scripture that we opened up with, I think we need to praise him daily. Praise him daily. I think as we praise him, not just in song, in song, you'll begin to, con to reflect on his greatness, on his creative, his creation. And, you know, you'll begin to reflect on all kinds of things. But also when you praise him just in word, just thank him and you're driving, things will come to your mind about the great things he's done for you as you praise him daily. Praise God. Praise his holy name. Thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for being able to, to grant you traveling mercies as you're traveling to and from. And when you, when you identify the sun or that beach or, or the waters on, on the, uh, the waves at the, at the, uh, there on the ocean front, thank him for his creation. Amen. When you, if you go visit a, an amusement park in the future and you see a whale or whatever the case may be, take the time to say, man, you are awesome. Amen. Right? When I, when I, I like to look at the, um, uh, the Animal Channel. The Animal Channel. It's on a, the cable, one of the cable stations there. And um, I, I think it's awesome how he's created animals, man. How they're, 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 ex, they're like, uh, they match. Lepers and zebras. And, but you know what? I just don't look at them. Just, uh, there's times where I want to take the time to say, man, you know what? God did all this. It's in the Bible. Amen. So praise him daily. And then number two, look with intent daily. Be intentional about uh, discovering his greatness. Be deliberate. Take the time to look at yourself and say, well, thank you, Lord, for, for, for your miracle working power and how you put me together in my mother's womb. Amen. Look at that son, man, and thank him for his faithfulness. Look with intent daily. I think it'll spring some gratitude in our hearts. Amen. Number three, pace yourself daily so you can recognize his greatness. Slow down sometimes. Don't be in such a hurry as you live life. Take the time to just slow down and and, and, and take a moment or two to exercise some gratitude about all that he's done for you and I. Um, I think it is important in being able to um, recognize um, how much greatness he's achieved. All from the Old Testament through the New Testament in our individual life, how he's been there for us time and time again. Pace yourself. Slow down. Don't be in such a hurry where you don't... Uh, in this one time shot we have to live here on earth, that we don't take the time to identify his greatness, to acknowledge it, and to uh, uh, not just briefly, not just periodically, but we do our best to do it on a daily basis. It keeps us close to him. It keeps us grateful for him. Amen? We are very honored and very privileged to be able to be a child of the Most High God. 
to be able to read his word and experience all that he's done in terms of creation, in terms of miracle working power, how he's really come through with promises and prophecies. And, you know, just you can look at his word and see, man, this is a great God. This is the greatest of all time when it comes down to it. I want to pray for us tonight. And uh, I believe that as we uh, begin to contemplate all that he's achieved for you and I, and then we begin to make effort at taking notice of it on a daily basis, I believe that it will. That's a one way of drawing nigh unto him, like, King, like the King James uh, Bible says in the book of James. If you draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. Another translation says, if you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. We have other ways of spiritually developing, but I believe that's one way. That's one way of drawing close to God is being able to, to um, identify and, uh, his achievements. Amen. As we live this life that we're living in today, it's, it's important. It's important this evening, especially when you consider all that is going on right now. I think we need to, uh, to uh, um, appreciate in greater levels and identify in greater capacity all that he's achieved in terms of his greatness for you and I. The world looks at greatness in different ways and all these other different uh, ways of uh, acknowledging greatness. But I think we need to have our own ways of acknowledging his greatness. And that's on a daily basis. And it's various ways that he's created, that he's achieved greatness for you and I. Father in heaven, I thank you tonight for this time in your word. And God, I thank you for how... uh, uh, I was able to put this message together and God, the great time that I had as I, as I did my best to put it together, God, are the things that you showed me, oh God, the things, uh, how you spoke to me, God, just through, uh, uh, just slowing down and just really taking the time to think things through and to contemplate and to really, really look at this world that we live in, my God, in so many different aspects, so many different ways. And the aspects that it, it entails this evening, my God. You are, God, such a great, huge part of this world that you, that you have created for us. God, help us to uh, just be people that just slow down. Help us to, to, be, uh, to make greater effort at, at identifying and acknowledging your greatness for us tonight. We love you this evening. We thank you so much because you are the greatest of all time. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And once again, we thank you, my God, for all that you've done for us. I pray a special prayer for those that are tuning in and listening, God, as they close their eyes, as they bow their heads right where they're at. I pray, God, that you would be the lifter of their head, their source of encouragement, their inspiration as they begin to or continue, God, just to appreciate you and all of your greatness there in their personal life. And as we're out there in that world, my God, uh, approaching and taking on life's challenges, help us to see you in greater capacity. And we'll be sure to give you all the glory and all of the honor. In Jesus' name we say, amen. 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 God bless you tonight. I hope you enjoyed that word. And I believe God gave it to me, not just for me, but to share it. And uh, we are back here Sunday morning. God bless you. And hopefully we'll see you not too far off in the future. We miss you. God bless you. Thank you.